In network models, before the data is ready for its transmission over the network channel, it is important to process the data with the specified services to reach proper transmission standards. And this task is handled by the data link layer of the OSI model. Hey everyone, today we will be learning everything that you need to know about the data link layer in the OSI model. But before we begin, if you love watching similar tech content, then subscribe to Simply Learn and hit the bell so you are the first to get notified when we host. Now without further ado, let's begin with the plan for today's session. First, we will have a quick recap on the OSI model. Then, we will dive deep into the core topic, which is about the data link layer. Moving on, we will have a detailed understanding of the major functions of the data link layer. Finally, we will wrap up the session by discussing the sub layers of the data link in the OSI model. Let's get started with the first heading, what is the OSI model? The OSI model stands for Open System Interconnection Model, a specifically designed set of protocols and standards governing the data's modeling and conversion for proper transmission. The OSI model is divided into seven layers which perform specific functions and apply protocols to maintain data quality without any error. Now, let's move on to the main topic for today's session which is about what is the physical layer. The data link layer is responsible for maintaining and terminating the established connection between the devices over the network. It has two sub layers. The first one is the medium access control, which uses the MAC addresses from the devices to transfer data between them. The second layer is the logical link layer, which identifies, checks flow control and performs the error check for the transmitted data. Advancing. Let's take a look at the functions provided by the data link layer. But before we begin, let's understand the data flow between the data link layer and other layers in the OSI model. That is, to begin with, the network layer will share the data packets with the data link layer. The data link layer handles these data packets by integrating them with frame structure where the frame acts as the header for the data packet. The data packet will contain information about the destination address, sender address and other related services. The final product of the data link layer is known as the data frame, which is then transmitted to the physical layer of the OSI model. Now, let's take a look at the list of functions provided by the data link layer. First is framing. Framing acts as a header format for the data. Then we have addressing, which handles the physical address of the data frame. Next is flow control, which is responsible for maintaining proper data exchange between the sender and the receiver side. Continuing with access control, which handles the communication link between multiple network devices. The last function is error control. As the name suggests, DDL provides error control services to the data. Now, let's take a closer look at all the data link layer functions. The first one is framing. The data packets received from the network layer are encapsulated in frames by the data link layer for bit-to-bit -bit sharing over the channel. It is also responsible for restructuring the framed data in the network model and each data frame is different from the others. Followed by that we have addressing. The task of adding a physical address to the frame in the header format is known as addressing. It acts as the identification service for transmitting the frames to multiple network models over the channel. The next one is the flow control. During the data transmission, the data flow of the sender or the receiver side may be different, causing network congestion in the channel. The data link layer in such situations acts as a flow control for the sender side to prevent the overflow at the receiver side. Followed by that, we have the access control. In this network model, 
when multiple devices share the same communication channel, this leads to data collision in the model. To prevent such data collisions, the data link layer performs checks on the devices with the same network channel to avoid any data loss. Lastly, we have error control. During data transmission due to noise or signal loss, errors might occur in the data being transmitted. To minimize such data error rate, the data link layer performs error detection and correction techniques on the transmitted data. Error detection is done by adding detection bits in the header of the transmitted data and the receiver side can check for any error in the received data. Now, let's take a look at the sub layers of the data link layer. In the OSI model, the data link layer can be divided into two sub layers, which are logical link control. This is the upper sub layer of the data link layer. The second one is the media access control or MAC, which is the lower sub layer of the data link layer. But before we begin with the details regarding the two sub layers, let's take up a quick quiz to consolidate what we have learned so far. Question Which of the following tasks is not performed by the data link layer? A. Addressing, B. IP services, C. Framing, D. Access control. You can give your answers in the comment section below. Now, let's take a look at some points related to each layer of the sub layers. The first one, which is logical link control. This sub layer is responsible for handling and maintaining the communication repeat. This sub layer is responsible for handling and maintaining the communication between the other layers of the OSI model. This layer also performs the task of overseeing the data flow rate of the channel. Lastly, it is also responsible for handling error messages and reliability checks for the data. Next, we have the media access control. This sub layer manages framing of the data received from the upper layers. This layer also handles the physical media for the model and interacts with the computer and IC. It is also responsible for data encapsulation and media access control for the data received. With this, we have discussed all the important points and functions of the data link layer in the OSI model. If you have any questions regarding the topics, you can ask them in the comment section. Thank you for watching and until next time, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.